this is obsidian a s m a don't forget to like subscribe and hit the notification bell for future videos Personality at a sneeze and Krillin. 
she and her mother explained that the Red Ribbon Army has taken the village chief hostage and are forcing the men to help them look for the Dragonborn. The chief is being held in a fortress called Muscle Tower, and at that point, two soldiers break in just as Goku is in the bathroom, but Goku beats them. Suno gives Goku warm clothes to wear outside, and then Goku makes his way to Muscle Tower and makes short work of the guards waiting outside. He uses his power pole to vault up onto the first level. Where he meets Major Metallatron, and this aired on the 29th of October, 1986. Goku enters the second floor of Muscle Tower and defeats the guards that are waiting for him. He heads up to the third floor, where he finds a large android named Major Metallatron. Goku and the Major start to fight. And after a few hits, Goku knocks him over. Though he's caught off guard, when the giant gets up and grabs him, Metallatron launches a missile at him, but Goku dodges it, and he counters with a Kamehameha wave, which blows Metallatron's head off. The android, though, is still moving. Goku punches a hole through the robot's chest, Remember that iconography. Ah, that symbolism. But even that doesn't stop the android. The fight finally ends when Major Metallatron's batteries run out of energy, leading to episode 37, Ninja Morosaki is coming. And this aired the 5th of November, 1986. So Goku enters the 4th floor of Muscle Tower and finds himself in the middle of a forest. But Ninja Murasaki is hiding and he's been sent to kill Goku. After a game of hide and seek, racing and even shuriken throwing, Murasaki finally decides to fight. And Goku breaks his sword with the power ball, prompting Murasaki to throw a boomerang at which hits and knocks Goku out. Episode 38 5 Murasaki's aired on the 12th of November 1986. Goku recovers from his injury and begins to chase Murasaki, but Murasaki and then Goku cross a piranha infested lake. Murasaki decides to use his ultimate technique and seemingly splits into five different people, well, versions of himself. The five Murasakis nearly overwhelm Goku, but they reveal that they are quintuplet properly. Quintuplet brothers. <laughs> Not five parts of one person. Goku takes them out one by one and he chases the last Murasaki uh, brother up to a cage. The ninja then releases the monster within Android 8. Mysterious Android number 8. Uh, debuted or aired on the 19th of November 1986. So after being released by Murasaki in order to fight Goku, Android 8 refuses. Murasaki then threatens Android 8 with a remote to set off the bomb inside of him, but Goku stops Murasaki destroys the remote and beats the ninja. Goku has walked into a labyrinth but cannot find a way past Android 8. <coughs> oh, sorry, past him. But Android 8 helps Goku to get through the maze. Uh, at this point, Android 8 is nicknamed 
General White, waiting for them in the sixth floor command room. And uh, General White won't give up and drops Goku and Ada down a trapdoor. Episode 40 Horrifying Booyan aired on the 26th of November 1986. When it airs, Goku and Ada landing on the fifth floor, where General White releases a monster to destroy both of them. Meanwhile, Suna has found some sweet furry rodents. Ada cowers at the other side of the room while Goku fights the monster Booyon. But Goku can't even hurt him. Booyon eats Goku, but Goku manages to struggle out. Even a Kamehameha wave doesn't seem to affect Puyon. Goku saves Ada from being eaten, and then he recalls an earlier exchange with Suno. Goku punches a hole in the wall, letting in cold air, and that freezes Puyon solid, allowing Goku to smash Puyon into pieces and ascend with Ada back command room. Episode 41, The Fall of Muscle Tower, aired on December the 3rd, 1986, and in it, Goku confronts General White, who is not very fit. Ada is too pacifistic to join the fight as General White grabs Goku by the tail. After giving General White a severe bashing, the latter pretends to surrender and releases the village chief. And when the chief's back is turned, General White threatens Goku and Ada to shoot the chief. The chief is hesitant whether he wants to live or die. Then the general blackmails Ada into beating Goku. Hearing this, an enraged Goku demands the White deal with him. And White promptly shoots Goku. Ada loses his temper and punches General White out of the tower. And finally, allowing all three of them to leave the tower as Ada destroys it. They all receive a warm welcome back at Suno's house. Episode 42 The Secret of Dr. Flap and this aired on the 10th of December, 1986. So, the village is safe again, but Suno's parents wonder where the Dragon Ball was. Ada had it all along, so General White wouldn't exterminate the village. Unfortunately, Ada cannot risk staying in the village, with the bomb still inside him. The chief suspect they go to, or sorry, suggests... They go to see Dr. Flap to sort the problem out. Goku also has broken his dragon radar. While Suno, Goku, and Ada head to Dr. Flap, Murasaki, who has survived, stalks them. Before Dr. Flap can go to work, Murasaki surprises him. It's revealed that Dr. Flap created Ata, working under the Red Ribbon Army. Murasaki forces Dr. Flap to steal Goku's Dragon Balls, and Goku chases and beats the ninja. Dr. Flap is then able to take the bomb out of Ata, but cannot fix Goku's radar. Goku throws the bomb at Murasaki, and that kills him. So this Dr. Flap that you might see there in the yellow coat is actually uh, speculated to be a, a version of Dr. Giroux, or at least in my head it could be a, a teacher or a collaborator with Dr. Giroux. And although Dr. Flap seemed to be a more benevolent uh, 
scientist. He could have inspired Chereau's later works. Anyway, episode 43, Trip to the City. This aired on the 17th of December, 1986, and after spending a night in Suno's house, one of the villagers helps Goku summon his Nimbus next morning. This allows Goku to reach West City, but he has no idea where to find Bulma. Nobody he meets has a clue, and Goku doesn't have any money, but he manages to win it, uh, a lot of it in a street fighting competition. Along the way, Goku's abducted by a couple of thieves, but they are far from a problem for him. Goku finds a policeman to direct him to Bulma's house, uh, which is the capsule corp, where dino caps were first invented. Then we get to episode 44, Master Thief Haski, which aired on the 24th of December 1986. So Bulma is currently out. She returns, skipping home from school. And then she leads Goku and the policeman to the garden where Bulma's father is. While Bulma fixes the radar, her father fixes the policeman's motorcycle. And Bulma finds Goku has procured two Dragon Balls to come with Goku. Bulma demonstrates her microband invention. And meanwhile, the Red Ribbon Army are plotting against Goku yet again. General Black has hired a master thief, Haski, to get the balls from him. The thieving rogues team up with her, and Goku and Bulma meet up with Yamcha, Buara, and Oolong, and they all decide to go to the new Dreamland Amusement Park. But... Haski is ready to make her move, which leads to episode 45, Danger in the Air, and this aired on the 7th of January, 1987. So Goku's group enters the Dreamland Amusement Park, with Haski and her two men stalking them. Haski plans how to steal the Dragon Balls while Goku's group is having fun. And she tries to bait the group into thinking she's a poor but promising fortune teller. Goku makes it difficult for Husky, but with the Dragon Balls in Yamcha's possession, Husky sees her chance. However, her cover is shortly blown when she swipes the Dragon Balls. Husky says she has planted a bomb to blow up Dreamland. Yamcha manages to tell Goku and on his flying Nimbus, he chases Haski's hover ship. Goku manages to pin down Haski, disarms the bomb, and takes back the Dragon Balls. And Bulma dumps Yamcha, and she and Goku head off to search for the remaining Dragon Balls. Poor Yamcha. So at this point, we actually enter the General Blue saga, starting with episode 46, Bulma's Bad Day, and this aired on January the 14th, 1987. So Goku and Bulma head to an island to look for a Dragon Ball, but the island is under the control of General Blue of the Red Ribbon Army. Goku lands on the island and finds only one Dino Cap in her father's uh, case. Bulma finds only one in her father's case. And there are several nudie mags. Bulma snatches the lot and gets frustrated and furious that her father is into it, and then shreds them up. Meanwhile, Goku dives into the ocean, but cannot dive deep enough to find the Dragon Ball. Meanwhile, a couple of red ribbon pilots are shooting at Bulma, and as the pilots
lights are as former. Goku comes and blows them from the sky. He decides to go to Master Roshi's, much to Bulma's dismay. Episode 47, Kame House, found, aired on the 21st of January, 1987. So as General Blue's men recover the scouts, Goku makes it to Roshi's island, and Roshi offers the submarine, which Krillin and Launch are using, in exchange for Bulma's microband. Meanwhile, Commander Red orders General Blue to take action. Roshi attempts to use the microband for some indecent mischief, and Launch and Krillin return. While planning to find the Dragon Ball, Krillin mentions something about Pirate's treasure, and Master Roshi tells it to tells him it's a tale. After Goku, um, Bulma and Krillin leave, a Red Ribbon Scout uh, spies on the island. Episode 48, uh, Deep Blue Sea, aired on the 28th. January 1987. Krillin manages to maneuver the air or sub ship to the location where the Dragon Ball is, but General Blue plans to tail Goku while another squad heads to Roshi's island. Despite their searching, Bulma, Krillin, and Goku do not find the Dragon Ball on the ocean bed. Meanwhile, General Blue prepares and launches all his forces as Krillin drives the sub into a cave. General Blue's submarine uh, tails and attacks them. Krillin makes it to narrower caves, but General Blue sends his mini-subs to pursue them. Episode 49, Roshi Surprise. Uh, I mean, really, this one aired on the 4th of February. 1987, and it can basically be summarized as General Blue's forces attack Kamei House, only to realize that Master Roshi is far, far stronger than he seems. Episode 50, The Trap is Sprung, aired originally on the 11th of February, 1987, and in it, Goku Krillin and Bulma arrive at a pirate ship, or a trap, and although Goku and Krillin are able to easily bypass it by jumping, Bulma needs assistance. Meanwhile, General Blue's forces pursue and are instantly wiped down by the trap. Episode 51, Beware of the Robot, aired 18th of February. 1987. Goku and Krillin fight the pirate robot in between evading its heavy machine gun and sword. Krillin manages to disarm the sword from it, whereas General Blue stays in hiding, watching the fight. Bulma fires a gun cannon on the robot as it skis across a pool. As Goku fights the robot with his power pole, Bulma rams a truck on it. Next, Robot tracks Goku into an underwater battle, with Goku narrowly escaping. The robot chases Bulma and Krillin throughout the hideout where all the pirates are dead. Goku recovers and rescues the other two, and performs an aerial attack smashing the robot into pieces. As everyone makes their way through the inner halls, the place begins to collapse, and Goku takes a different route from the others. Bulma, Krillin, and General Blue dive into a well. Then we reach episode 52, The Pirate Treasure. As the hideout continues to collapse, Goku reaches a dead end and falls down a trapdoor onto a giant octopus. Krillin and Bulma emerge into a room with a booby-trapped ten-armed statue and three chests, and General Blue emerges. Krillin disarms the statue and opens the gold chest while Goku blasts and eats the octopus. Bulma inserts a key in the statue and General Blue 
27, Arale versus Blue, aired on the 8th of April, 1987. Senpai attempts to fix the dragon radar while Officer Toro stumbles into the coffee shop. Baby Turbo manages to help Senpai fix the radar, and Blue arrives and waits for his chance to steal the plane by the family's house. Blue tries to avoid detection from Goku's fixed radar. The police at the station are getting trigger happy, and Goku finds Blue by surprise, and Blue threatens Arale with a knife in front of the family. Blue stuns Goku and swipes the dragon radar, but before Blue can kill Goku, Arale jumps in and chases him through Penguin Village. Meanwhile, a small fight occurs between the police and a couple of aliens, mistaken for the Red Ribbon Army. Turbo offers us, or offers, to make a new radar for the one Goku lost, and Blue is shown making contact with Red from a desolated area. Then we move into the next saga, which is the Commander Red saga. So episode 58, The Land of Corrin, aired on the 15th of April, 1987. In the Land of Corrin, Captain Yellow finds another Dragon Ball in a volcano crater. Crater. Near a massive tower that reaches the sky, Bora and his son Upa are fishing as Captain Yellow's men retrieve the Dragon Ball. The volcano erupts. Bora gets hold of the Dragon Ball as Yellow and his men land. Bora demands that they leave. When they see him carrying the Dragon Ball, they attack him, but Bora resists. Bora kills a grenadier who comes from behind and beats down Yellow's men. Yellow kidnaps Uber to blackmail Bora. Goku arrives in time to defeat Yellow and save Uba, who is able to ride the Nimbus. The Dragon Ball, the Bora has, is the very one Goku was looking for. Meanwhile, the guards of the Red Ribbon base hardly recognize General Blue on his arrival, just as Commander Red has summoned the infamous Mercenary Tao. The Notorious Mercenary, episode 59, aired on the 22nd of April, 1987. <coughs> General Blue enters the Red Ribbon base and meets with Commander Red. Despite procuring the Dragon Radar, Red is displeased with Blue and offers him a second chance if he can defeat Mercenary Tao. He fails, and Mercenary Tao easily kills him. Meanwhile, Bora tells Goku the legend of the Korin Tower. After being briefed on his target, Tao travels on a flying pillar to Korin's land. And as Goku, Bora, and Upa are enjoying themselves, Tao storms in, and Bora fights him. Bora is killed by Tao, leaving Upa in grief and Goku in anger. Episode 60, Tao Attacks, aired on the 6th of May, 1987. Goku fights Tao, or sorry, the 29th of April, 1987. Goku fights Tao, taking a severe beating. The Kamehameha wave has no effect on Tao, but it sears his outfit. Angered, Tao fires a lethal beam, a Dodon Ray, on Goku. He takes the Dragon Balls and taunts Upa before making his leave, and Tao heads to a town to get a new outfit. While Red tells him that he is one Dragon Ball short, Upa, meanwhile, has buried his father and is about to bury Goku when a Red Ribbon pilot lands. As the pilot tries to take the Dragon Ball, 
Koku kept. Koku beats him and blasts his jet. Apparently Koku's grandfather's Dragon Ball blocked the Dodon wave. And Goku begins to climb the Korang Tower, while Tao waits for his outfit to be tailored to Red's frustration. And finally tonight, episode 61, Korang Tower, which aired on the 6th of May, 1987. Goku eventually reaches the summit of Korang's Tower, and is there he is met with Corrin, who is not about to hand the sacred water to Goku. An assassin fails to kill Mercenary Tao as he heads to his usual luxurious hotel to take a boiling hot bath. Corrin seems to be deceitful, not letting Goku take the bottle of the sacred water after a long, hard attempt trying to get the sacred water. Corrin reveals that Master Roshi was the first to climb the tower, and it took him three years to get the water. And that's it for now. As always, thank you so much for watching these videos and tuning in. Uh, I say it all the time, but I mean it. is an amazing uh, and truly humbling feeling to know that you enjoy all this. You all enjoy this <laughs> as much as I enjoy making it. Now forgive me that I've been a bit lapsadaisical with my wording today. I have been a little bit ill, but nothing can stop our pursuits when it comes to Dragon Ball. So with that, uh, if you like the video, be sure to give it a like, comment below, and if you fancy it, subscribe. And until next time, as always, take care of yourselves and each other. <laughs>